Okay, so in this lecture we're going to learn some uh, concepts of, some simple concepts of object-oriented programming. And this is the key sort of differentiator between Python and, and a language like MATLAB or something that you might have used before in that Python was intended from the sort of very beginning of its development to be an object-oriented language. And in fact, we'll see later that everything in Python is in fact an object. So what is an object? Well, objects are things that are defined by classes, and uh, I'll show you the syntax for that in a second. But an object, the main thing that an object is, is it's, it's a type of uh, container that holds both data, uh, so it holds data, or those are sometimes called attributes, and then it has a set of functions that operate on that data, so it can manipulate that data, okay? And so let's start with a, we'll write a class, and so the simple, um, the syntax in Python is class, and let's start with creating a class called square. Right? And so the class square is gonna have um, some functions, Right? Uh, well, it's going to have some data, and it turns out there is a special init function that you have to call, or you have to write every time that you write a class, and in that is where you can set up some uh, data. So in this case, we could have the name uh, of the shape, right? So in this case, uh, the shape would be square, and then uh, we could have sort of uh, another data say side links, and this would be a Python list of the links of the sides of the square, right? And so in this case, one, 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 one. Uh, I actually think maybe, uh, let's use rectangle. Um, so, there's the data, and, and we know that this data belongs to this class uh, because we use this keyword self in front of it. So uh, there's going to be data associated with a rectangle that is, uh, just returns the name square, and then there's also going to be uh, the length of the sides uh, container, right? And so then we could write a function, say, compute perimeter uh, that will just simply return the sum of the length of the sides. Right? So that's a simple class, right? Oh, I forgot my commas here. So it's a simple class, um, and then so then what we're going to write now is we're going to, an object is an instantiation of a class, right? So we'll say um, rectangle is equal to rectangle. Sorry, I forget. This is the first argument for any function in a class should always be self, right? And so rectangle, uh, now I've instantiated that, and so if I do and use this syntax, and you've used this a little bit, but you, you didn't really know what you were doing, uh, but so if I say rectangle dot shape, that returns square. If I say rectangle uh, dot side links, um, then that returns the actual length of the sides. And what you'll see is now I can instantiate another rectangle. So I can re re instantiate or, in fact, what I can do is I can redefine side lengths to be one, two, two, or one, two, one, two, right? So that would be like going around a rectangle from, from one side around. Might have uh, sides like that. Um, and so then, so I've re actually redefined that data. And so then if I write it out, you'll see that it's changed. And then I can actually call that compute perimeter on that guy. So if I call compute perimeter, then it's going to return 
the sum of the side lengths, right? So then I can instantiate another uh, shape, and this time I'll, I'll call it a, qu a square, uh, which of course a square is a rectangle with equal sides, right? So in this case, we'll just leave square like it is and compute perimeter. And there you see I have that. Um, so that in and of itself didn't really buy me a lot in terms of, you know, why, why would you do this? It seems like a lot of code and you could just write functions and call it on lists, uh, you know, that are associated with um, different, um, you could just say write a function called, a normal function called compute parameter and then just feed the side links as an argument uh, to that function and then, you know, you would do that. But w where object-oriented programming comes into play or, or has a lot of utility in terms that if you do it correctly, then you can write a lot less code over time, is uh, you can actually have what's called inheritance, right? And so from our, um, so, well, with that example in mind, let's, let's just go back, uh, let's, let's hold on to our rectangle and we'll, um, we'll come back to it later. So I'm gonna, I'm going to uh, open a new cell, oops. I'm going to open a new cell above it. And in this case, I'm going to define some classes that will be come to known as base classes. So at the very sort of highest level, right, uh, a rectangle, I'm sorry, a rectangle is a shape. So I'm just going to define a class called shape. always have to have this init and in uh, the init is just going to have one I mean the the shape is really just going to have one attribute called shape right and because it doesn't make sense to, to define something like side links if I don't even know what the shape is it could be a hexagon or you know it could be any any number of things right I'm also going to define a special function called string or str and this is going to return a little print statement, uh, and what it's going to do is return I am a shape, right? And so uh, that's it. That's all I'm going to. That's all I'm going to have in that class. And so, then if I say S is equal to shape, right? It doesn't really all I can do then is, and the the the, the this is where the special str comes in, is that if I actually call print on s, so s, remember, is an object. It contains both uh, data and functions. But the, the, the special nature of str means that if I call the print statement on the object itself, then it's going to return that print string, right? In this case, I am a shape, okay? Now, that's not that interesting, but we'll, we'll, we'll see a little more here in a second, right? So what I'll do then now is I'm going to define a new class that's going to inherit from shape, right? And so now I'm going to have a class, and I'll call this class polygon, and it's going to inherit from shape, right? And of course, a polygon is a shape, right? And so we need to have these uh, print state the the init statement there, so I'm going to copy it and paste it here. And so now I'm going to redefine this to be polygon, right? <clears throat> and then I'll give it an attribute side links, which is going to be in this case an empty list because I don't know. Again, a polygon could have any number of sides, so I can't I can't fill that in yet. So I'm just going to leave it as an empty list for now, and I'm going to define a function. Even though the, si the length of the sides is empty, I'm going to define a function to compute the perimeter. Right? I'll just borrow this one here from rectangle. Right? So if we go there, so now I've defined a function 
that's going to return the sum of side lengths, right? Of course, for a generic polygon, that doesn't mean anything because there's nothing there, right? And uh, so, and perhaps what I should do, let's see if this works. Maybe I should define it as none. I'm not sure what happens when you call a sum of none. But anyway, uh, what you'll see here, right, a polygon is a shape, which means I'm going to inherit all of the functions of shape, which in this case is the print string, right? So what you'll see is that I don't need to rewrite that function because a polygon is a shape, which means if I come down here and I instantiate a polygon and then I call the print statement on P, even though I didn't define the function str like I did above, it inherited that property from shape or that function from shape and then I can use it in this. So that, that saved me having to re-implement str in my class polygon. Right? So now it gives us something you know, interesting to do with rectangle. Right? So uh, let's, yeah, okay, rectangle. So now I can make my class rectangle inherit from polygon, and polygon is shape, so therefore I've inherited also, I inherit the functions defined in polygon, which in this case are the compute parameter class, and I've also inherited the function string from shape, right? And any data attributes that I overwrite, so in this case shape, I want to be rectangle, and in this case, the side links, I'm going to give it some default values, right? Now, now then, I can come down here and I can call compute perimeter. I can define my class and I can call compute perimeter uh, on the instantiation of rectangle, even though I didn't define compute perimeter within the class rectangle. I defined it in polygon. And of course, it inherited it from that. So then, uh, as another example, then we could say and have a new class called triangle that's also going to in inherit from polygon uh, because the triangle is also a polygon. Going to redefine shape there and give it some side links. Well, I'll just use one one one. Right? And now I can have an instantiation of triangle. And because it also inherits from polygon, I can call compute perimeter on it without ever having to find it. So then I have compute, compute parameter, right? Um, could also do things like define uh, a function, say, get number of edges. Right? And that function is going to return the length of side length. And so then I can call that on right. 
juntos. Right. So uh, there you can see, I, d I just changed them to two so you could see it wasn't the same function call over and over again. Of course, if I call print on t, the object I instantiated from triangle, uh, then it, it shows you that I'm a triangle. And again, I never, I never defined that. Uh, you know, I defined that print statement up here in shape, polygon inherited in that, and then rectangle and triangle, which both inherit from polygon inherit from that, right? And you could go on and on. You could have equilateral triangle. You could, uh, you could have rectangle as a specialization of a polygon and so on and so on, right? And so, uh, you know, the more abstracted you get, meaning the more sort of inherited classes uh, you get, then typically you can um, end up writing less code overall because you, didn't have, you don't have to re-implement functions um, that you know, basically do the same job on, um, you know, again, the example here to compute the perimeter, it, you know, you're just totaling the length of the sides and that's the same operation if it's a rectangle, a triangle, uh, or, you know, a, a pentagon or any other type of polygon. So you could go on and implement all of those and then you wouldn't have to re-implement the compute perimeter class uh, function and all of those. So, um, Again, like I said at the beginning, everything in Python is an object. And so uh, you've actually been using this previously, right? So if you have a list, uh, like so, right? And you call sort on that list, right? So what, in this case, x is an instantiation of a list object, if you list type object. And so then that list object has functions uh, defined on it, and one of those functions is sort, and so then if you call that, uh, then look at what x is. Yeah. So in this case, the numbers 2, 4, and 100 are, are data, they're attributes of this sort of list object, and then when you call sort, you're operating on that data, you're, you're, you're moving it around uh, in, into a different location, and, and the function is also def part of that class, it's defined there. So. Uh, yeah, this is the basics of object-oriented programming. I guess in, in most of my examples here, I, I didn't have um, the, the argument to the function never took on anything. So uh, you can actually have arguments to classes. So you could define a class, um, say car, that you know take, takes an argument. And the, the way you do that is you, in the init statement, you have to have uh, the first, the first thing always has to be self, but then you could give it an argument. So in this case, uh, say number of doors, and that equals some value. You can give it a default value, say two, right? And then, uh, so then you can ha have self number of doors equal to, uh, which you could redefine possibly, or, or actually what you want to do is say self equals number of, now I, I know this looks a little strange, but what you have here is uh, self dot number of doors is an attribute of this class, whereas this number of doors without the self in it is just a parameter that's being passed in. It's an argument to the function, right? In this case, it has a default value of two, right? But then you could have uh, members of that class that, you know, behave differently according to that guy somehow. So if we have a string there, um, in this case, what we'll do is we'll say um, if um, if number of doors equal two, then we want to return the string I am a coop and say if number of doors equals four you can say I am a sedan and then you can say else 
I uh, don't know what kind of something like that, right? So then if we instantiate this guy, uh, and we can give it an argument, right? So if we give it, if we give it nothing, the default will be two. And so then if we call the print on C, uh, we'll say I'm a coop, but we could also say car equals um, four. Uh, and we can call print on that and then it will know it's a sedan. And then we can also give it something else and call print on that. Right. So um, you, can ha you can have, uh, of course, the functions of the, the themselves, uh, the methods defined on the class uh, can also ha take arguments. They just always need to have the, words, the keyword self as the first argument, but after that, you can have your regular function arguments that you'd have, and then you can change the behavior of what the function does based on those arguments. So anyway, I hope this is a good primer for uh, object-oriented programming. And the, way, the best way to learn it is just to solve problems. So in the next few homework assignments, I'll be setting things up uh, as sort of object-oriented type programming, and you can, uh, you can uh, just work through some examples on your own.